That's okay. The one and only Dr. Mark Keenum, president of Mississippi State University, and boy, we miss sports. We miss we miss school. We miss sports. We missed activities. And I think when we when we return, uh, uh, when the president says we have a lot of pent up uh, in us, I think he's absolutely right. Good morning, sir. How are you? Dr. Keenum there? Oh, hey, good morning. Good morning, sir. Hey, Carl, I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Good to much. have you. Would you agree with the president that we have a lot of pent-up uh, energy that we're ready to let loose? I believe, I know <laughs> I do. I can tell you that, speaking personally. <laughs> so how is, are you, do you, do you have a chance to go to the office every once in a while? Do you go in on a daily basis, or how's your routine yeah. now? I'm putting in eight to ten hours a day in my office. I haven't stopped doing that for the past, oh, goodness, almost Two months now, eight weeks. It's got to be. Uh, it's got to be eerie in places like uh, college towns. We talked about Oxford uh, earlier, but also at, at Mississippi State. It's just uh, got to be an eerie feeling, doesn't it, Don? Well, it is. You know, um, of course, campuses are full of life and activity, and and just a vibrant uh, environment with students. And but to see our campus in the spring, and it's so beautiful, and there there's no one here. Mm-hmm. Our students are, are not here, and very few staff are coming in. Uh, of course, we have to keep our campus, and we have to maintain it, and we have people that need to come in to keep our campus operations still up and functioning. Um, but it's a real skeletal crew here right now, and that's that's very disheartening, I'll just tell you. You, uh, you take a look at the budget and see where we're going in the future, and everybody's just holding their breath here. The legislature comes back on the 18th, but uh, it's it's a whole new ball game out there, and I think some of the, the things that they're going to be faced with. We didn't get the April numbers uh, yesterday that we were talking about uh, with, the, with the speaker, and I haven't heard right. them yet, but I'll check today. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing those numbers as well. You know, March was a, was a fairly good month for Mississippi, you know, yeah. nearly – Nearly thirty million dollars, uh, almost in, in March, and and we've had a great first. You know, I would say you know uh, three quarters of our fiscal year have been really outstanding. Uh, our state was humming, you know, through the first half of the fiscal year, uh, and uh, you know, I, I was very optimistic about our budget, you know, uh, situation going forward. But obviously the the COVID-19 curveball that we're all having to deal with is really is going to have a major impact. I know that uh, our speaker, our lieutenant governor, and our governor are, are very concerned about our revenues going forward, as are people like me and, and, and all the other agencies and our colleges and universities and community colleges and K-12. We're very concerned about our future as our revenues are concerned, no doubt. I got to ask you this, and I, I don't know, but uh, are there any contracts out there where you guys have contracts that have <clears throat> maybe some have even started that require future funding that that now are in jeopardy about this uh, because of this? Well, you know, yeah, I mean, uh, we're, I think across the board, a lot of people have issues and contracts and obligations, but I think a lot of that is being dealt with, and mm-hmm. and we're managing accordingly. Uh, I will say that. Um, you know, for this university, and I'll speak for Mississippi State, we are as probably as well prepared financially to deal with the crisis, um, and I'll put us up against any school for that matter across the country. Uh, we've managed our accounts and our funding and so forth, and we've had enrollment growth over the last, oh my goodness, at least five or six consecutive years of enrollment growth has helped our revenue base here on our university campus. but. But having said all that, we also recognize that we're in for some really dark days to come. Uh, we have no, you know, we, we're hoping we can reopen uh, in the fall with in-person classes. Uh, uh, Commissioner Al Rankins of IHL has appointed a task force, uh, two rep, two administrators from each of our eight universities. Uh, I'm real pleased that he selected our provost, Dr. David Shaw, to be the chairman of that task force to put together plans for how all of IHL can reopen in the fall and do it in a safe manner, effective and efficient manner, because that's what we want to do. We want to bring our students back, and and I'll just tell you that our applications and, and, and our new student numbers were looking really good going into this calendar year. We were looking for another really good enrollment in the fall, and I'm hoping we'll have a good enrollment in the fall. 
And I do hope and pray, pray every day that we'll be able to offer uh, in-person classes uh, back here in the fall, and that's what we're going to work to try yeah. to achieve. But we've got to do it, again, under the guidelines set forth at the federal and state level. And so it's just a lot of unknowns, Paul. Is um, is there a drop-dead date that this guy has got to be done just to give people a bearings about the, when this is going to happen and a date that it must happen by? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I wish I had a drop-dead date mm-hmm. or a deadline or a timeline. You know, we're going to just keep working uh, and making plans and contingencies. Uh, I know a lot of uh, students and parents uh, are anxious because – you know, uh, do they sign a lease, for example, yeah. on an yeah. apartment? And w- what if they sign a lease and we're not allowed to open up because of federal or state guidelines, and and we can only offer online classes in the fall? So there's a there's a lot of anxiety out there, and my heart is with our students and our families, and and I want to be as as reassuring as I can, and I can just say that I can promise that we're doing everything humanly possible to get information out when we know it, but there's just so much beyond our control that, you know, we can't predict. But we are making contingency plans, and we will have a plan in place on how, if and when we get the green light, that we can allow students to come back to campus and do it in a very effective and efficient manner and in a safe manner, and not only for our students, but also for our faculty and staff and for all of our employees here. Safety is the absolute number one uh, paramount uh, criteria for me personally and making sure that we protect all of our students to the very best of our ability. And, of course, we're going to adhere to all the guidelines that are set forth at the federal and state levels. I do. I feel for everybody who's making these decisions. They're both uh, strategic and also financial decisions as far as loans, student loans, everything else that they have to process. And and and, and it's very difficult for them. But for them, all the way to the the people in town, the small businesses that rely yes. on that influx of sporting events and everything else. Speaking of which, last couple of years, um, I, I was over there for graduation ceremonies with. One year a, a, a granddaughter, and the next year a granddaughter. But now right. I think it would be it would it would have to be virtual, is it not? Well, speaking of, thank you. Uh, tomorrow is our commencement day or ex- mm-hmm. graduation day for Mississippi State, May the first. And uh, I'd love to welcome our graduates. You know, graduation day is one of the most exciting days for me personally. It's a day of joy and excitement and celebration for the achievement of all of our really talented students and what they've accomplished and and of course we cannot welcome our students tomorrow uh, into the Humphrey Coliseum to participate in the wonderful ceremony that you just mentioned that you've attended and and, and really my heart breaks for our students and I'm just so sad for our students that we can't do that tomorrow. I want, I want, can you hold on for a second because I want yeah. to see exactly what's going to happen there and also touch base on uh, a little bit later on in the fall what's going to happen with sports with Dr. Mark Keenum, president of Mississippi State University. We'll talk to him. Come- okay, we are back live. Speaking of Starkville, furniture maker Flex Steel is closing uh, for good in Starkville. That's not good news. Employees at the Industrial Road Plan have until September when the doors close. Flex Steel is based in Iowa. Company executives announced uh, yesterday they're shuttering the Starkville plant along with the newest facility in Des Moines uh, or in Dubuque. Uh, Flex Steel reported a financial loss of more than $5 million since January, but uh, times have gone tough uh, in a rapid uh, amount of time. And we're going to go through it, though. We're talking to Dr. Mark Keenum, president of Mississippi State University, and I, I hope by next year at this time it will all be just a bad memory. I hope and pray, Paul. Uh, I agree with you. You know, as I mentioned, uh, tomorrow uh, we're celebrating our, our graduates in the, the only way we can right now, and that's doing it through a virtual uh, ceremony. Um, it will actually be a live broadcast tomorrow at 2 o'clock, 2 p.m., uh, WCBI out of Columbus will broadcast it. Uh, it will be on, our, of course, our website and all of our social platforms. Uh, I urge all of our graduates and their families to tune in. And, you know, while this is not what any of our graduates uh, expected for their graduation day, it's the best we can do right now. And, 
and, I, and I've made a commitment that we are going to try to find a time uh, once we get a green light that we can gather again to mm-hmm. hopefully maybe in the late summer, early fall, have another graduation for our spring graduates. And, and of course, we're going to invite any of them who would like to walk and go through the December graduation. But I just can't let this uh, graduation day go by tomorrow and not do something. Absolutely. Congratulations and how proud we are of their achievement. Give me, a, uh, give me an idea what this is going to look like. Well, it's it's we're going to have pomp and circumstance, and mm-hmm. it's going to be it's going to look and feel very similar to what you would see at a at what you saw when you attended your your grandchildren's uh, graduation uh, in in the hump. It's going to have that same feel to it. Uh, I'll be you know using technology, and uh, I want it to have that feel. It's very solemn, very serious, but a celebratory occasion. And and you know, Paula, it's it's interesting that this is the largest graduation class we've ever had at Mississippi State. How about that? Uh, we'll be awarding just for the spring over 3,300 graduates, and when you look at the whole academic year uh, that we're completing. We've set a record of over 5,500 degrees that we are awarding this year for Mississippi State. Again, an all-time record. And, you know, as I mentioned a while ago, our enrollment has been growing. And as a result of that, we produce more college graduates, which we desperately need. For so you'll, you'll, be, you'll, be men- you'll be mentioning their name just, just like if we were there, and then they'll show a picture of them. Well, we're not going to be able to call because think about about that. We have, you know, over 3,300 graduates, so unfortunately we will not be able to call every name. Mm -hmm. But we'll go through the the normal commencement ceremony. We'll have, uh, of course, our student body president this year is going to provide an outstanding message to our graduates. Of course, I I provide a, a message, and then I actually confer their degrees and do it online. So it's a, it's, I think it's going to be something that will be unique. Um, it'll be remembered. <laughs> you know, so, like I said, it'll be the most unique Absolutely, graduation yes. in our 142-year history. But, but my, again, my plan, Paul, is to do a more traditional graduation. I hope and mm-hmm. pray uh, once we know what we can do from uh, being able to gather safely, hopefully towards the end of the summer, Or whenever, like I said, when we can go ahead and make our plans, but we have a green light from our public health officials and our our state and federal leaders. What time does that start? 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow afternoon. Well, you know, you try to put a good face on this one, uh, Dr. Marquino. We try to put a good face on these things. I think the good news about this is parking is going to be easier this year. (laughs) Yeah, parking will be will be no problem this year. <laughs> uh, let's talk about sports. Uh, and, I, and nobody knows exactly what's going on and how it's going to go on. But, man, there's so much excitement with a new head coach. And yeah. everybody's pent up. We want to be there. Uh, whether it's – I don't care if it's high school football. We just want to get out and go. Amen. We do, too. Uh, of course, we have to abide by all the, again, guidelines from our public safety officials. And, and um you know, a lot of talk about football, and we're uh, very anxious to be able to have football, but under what restrictions or conditions? We, we Right now, Paul, as I speak mm-hmm. to you, we just we don't know. Uh, we do hope that we are able to have football in the fall and in our other fall sports as well, but everybody's really focused on football. SEC football is so big in the South, and especially here in Mississippi, and, you know, uh, we have weekly calls with our commissioner, Greg Sankey, of the Southeastern Conference and all the other presidents and chancellors. And, and we're obviously very much wired in with the NCAA and, and what, because we've got to have some commonality across the nation on what we're able to do. Absolutely. And, and so, uh, and then, of course, our coaches are anxious. You know, we've got uh, Mike Leach. He's not had a chance to be on the practice field. He's a brand new coach, and and Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss, brand yeah. new coach, yeah. not had an opportunity to be on the field with his team. And you, you want your players to learn the offenses and the defenses and be prepared to to compete and compete at a, at a high level. Um, and so, when is the you know if we're going to have you know college football is around Labor Day. And so you're talking about first of, March, first of September. 
And so when can the young men be back on the practice field? But here, you know, it's, it's interesting that you probably can create as safe an environment for a football team as, because you can pretty much keep them confined and isolated from outside, you know, uh, other people interacting with them. You know, they all can live together in the same facility, eat together, stay together, practice together. Uh, so you can pretty much provide very safe measures for a team uh, so they can prepare themselves. And will we be allowed to be on the practice field by, say, uh, early July or yeah. mid-July? What if it's not until August the 1st? Can you have a team prepared to compete uh, by September the 1st? I mean, there's a lots of things that are going on, a lot of discussions, and but we've got to have commonality across all the conferences uh, on when we can get the green light to allow our teams to reconvene and start actually practicing. Yeah, I don't think I could have said this uh, in years past for a long time, but it's almost a little bit like after 9-11. Uh, it's, it's as much in, uh, more important, I think, as, as important for just us, the people who want to watch and want to participate. Yes as it is for the players now, because we all need to get that some semblance of normal or, or, or at least a path to get there. Right, but you got to do it in a safe manner. We can't Absolutely. let our guard down. We don't want a, a massive reoccurrence of COVID-19 and have more deaths, tragic deaths, for um, our society. And, and we've got to have safety. has got to be paramount yeah. in any decisions. And, a lot of, and, 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 and ahead, who sorry. will be allowed to attend the games and how many will we – be allowed to admit into a game or or will fans even be admitted to the games you know there's so many what ifs <laughs> makes your head spin yeah we never we it's new ground we've never crossed this before I, while i got you on the air let me ask you if you if you looked at the the new ncaa rules and regulations that they're con contemplating as far as marketing is concerned because that was something that took another step yesterday toward that possibility Right. Yes, the NCAA Board of Governors have adopted some guidelines for name, image, and likeness for student athletes. And, mm -hmm. and, and I'll just, you know, go on record saying I, I, I'm an advocate for student athletes to be able to receive more support. And but you know, it's it's a very complicated issue. Uh, I, I want student athletes not to be taken advantage of by unscrupulous agents and and be uh, exploited. Uh, it has to be done in a very thoughtful, concise manner. Yeah. Uh, we're spending a lot of time within the SEC discussing this. And, and, and by the way, uh, Paul, our very own Senator, uh, Roger Wicker, is chairman of the Commerce, Science, and Transportation Committee That's in right. the Senate. And yeah. this issue uh, <laughs> is in his committee, under That's his it. jurisdiction. So. Whether he wants it or not, it's in his committee. <laughs> you know, I was joking with somebody yesterday and asked me what I thought about it. I said, well, you know, I kind of like it, but I wonder, they can't use the, the, the logos of the team, but if they could use a logo from, uh, I would love to have the, the, the third string biggest lineman who's never going to see a, a, a bit of play, but he'll be on the bench and have the gallery show logo on on the back of him as a as a stationary billboard so, no but it is we talk about new ground this is all new and and they talk about it transforming college sports and i think it will yeah i think you're right and we need congressional oversight on this it's got to be a national issue uh with federal preemption i i look forward to when that is the main topic of sports and not the shutdown Amen, my friend. Yeah. Amen. It's always good having you. I appreciate it, sir, very much. Dr. Mark Keenum, thank you for joining us.